news in college sports. Let's talk about the House versus the NCAA settlement and how it's shaking things up for NIL collectives. I'll start with the lawsuit against the NCAA, and now the Big 12, ACC, and Big 10 conferences have agreed to terms. The SEC and Pac-12 are expected to jump on board as well. Here's the scoop. A massive $2.8 billion fund is being created to pay former athletes who missed out on earnings from their NIL. The NCAA is putting in $1.1 billion, and the schools are covering the rest with $1.6 billion. These payments will roll out over the next 10 years. Starting in fall of 2025, schools will also share revenue directly with college athletes. This means players can be paid by their universities, which is a game changer. But there's a big catch. Conferences they're pretty upset. They generate less money, but have to pay out 60% of the settlement, which could take up to 20% of their revenue. This is hitting them pretty hard. One insider from a smaller conference said, this is incredibly unfair. I'm losing about 10% of my operating budget. Do I cut two staff members for the money to go to Zion Williamson? Now let's talk NIL collectives. With schools paying athletes directly, the role of collectives is changing. They used to be the middleman between donors and athletes, but now that donors can give money straight to schools, collectors might seem less important. There is a cap on how much revenue can actually be shared, so collectives might still be used Useful to offer incentives to recruits to join a school. Also, Title IX means male and female athletes could get equal NIL payments, which could squeeze the school's budget even more. This could completely reshape how collectives function moving forward. So the takeaway? The House vs. NCAA settlement is reshaping college sports and NIL collectives will look very different in the future. So stay tuned as we'll cover this as it unfolds. Follow NIL Wire for more and subscribe to our free newsletter to keep up with everything NIL.